Hello my friends, this is Jane Nettie Wessel and today's lesson is just an amazing lesson on Lady Jesus. You know, so many times I've talked to you about signs, wonders, and miracles and how the end times church, the Bride of Christ, is going to have demonstrative miracles as a part of our ministry. In Jesus' ministry, he taught us that he received the Holy Spirit and stepped out into ministry and part of his ministry was demonstrating miracles to the people so that they would believe that he was from God, that he was the Son of God, and that he was going to take them back to God by dying for them on the cross, and that he was the only way to the Father. You know, miracles were Jesus' way of authenticating his, his um, deity that he was a deity, that he was the son of the living God. And he has given us that power and authority. He says that in his word, that he has given us the power and authority to trample upon serpents and snakes, and that he said that we would raise the dead and heal the sick and walk on water, and he would do greater things than he has done, and that we were to wait for the Holy Spirit, to receive the Holy Spirit um, in, at Pentecost, and then we were to go to the ends of the earth, and he was going to give us his signs, wonders, and miracles. I remember last year, in January of last year, he woke the Holy Spirit woke me up in the middle of the night and said, he's going to give you his signs, wonders, and miracles. And that was a, signs, wonders, and miracles of Christ Jesus. And you know, and the Lord has given me so many miracles in my lifetime. And there, are, he's, he's taught me to operate in signs, wonders, and miracles and to expect the impossible. And because he says he's given us keys to the kingdom of heaven. What do we bind on earth is bound in heaven. What do we loosen on earth is loosened in heaven. And that we have the power to do the great and mighty things. So many times I'll pray for a miracle and God will say, you do it. I've already given you the power authority in my son and he's already given you the house key so I need you to operate in miracle power so I want you to know that today's lesson is actually considered a lab class and today um, God wants me to show you uh, one of the miracles he had done and last year at this time I had prayed for a miracle you know one of the things in our ministry is God has me go out and do miracles to show that God is real and and so I want to raise some points about this one this is not for my glory I'm not showing you this for because I don't want any glory and I'm not asking you to applaud me this is for you to applaud the glory of God the Father the Heavenly Father who answers prayers and does great and mighty things in our midst to show that he is real and that he is with his children and that he hears our prayers and when he tells us to command things into existence that we need to walk out and do it Two, this is for disciples. This anointing and power is for true believers who follow Jesus and lead others in the gift of evangelism and to go out and make disciples of all men in the book of Acts there was a man named Simon the sorcerer and he saw the disciples doing miracles and he wanted to pay them to teach him how to do miracles and that's not what it's about God isn't about having us do miracles you know sometimes people will say oh you have the gift of prophecy tell me what are the winning numbers for the lottery and you know what God won't let us do that it's not for getting rich it's not for getting powerful it's about for the glory of God and bringing the loss to Jesus Christ and manifesting God's perfect will for the world whether it be healing from sickness whether it be provision when God provided you know he uh, broke the bread and the fish and fed the 10,000 with two loaves and five fish you know so God wants to do miracles like that in and through you and I but it's not for us getting rich it's not about that and it's not us becoming powerful and glorious no it's about glorifying our Heavenly Father three this is by the power of the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the one doing the miracles it's not by might not by power but by my spirit says the Lord and that's Zechariah chapter 4 and uh, we will level out these mountains of sin with shouts of grace grace to it and God will build his temple and part of this is building the temple it's the Holy Spirit doing the miracles not us we're the ones praying and believing and standing for it and the Holy Spirit is the one that's operating in and through us and answering our prayers and our prophetic word and when we prophesy as a people of God God will honor our prophetic word three it is based on our intimacy with the Lord when we are deep in love with him and walking in union and unit, uh, unity with him, he hears our prayers. You know, um, it's, it's when you are closest to God that you could hear him the best. And I make a point of making sure I sit on our Papa God's lap on a daily basis that I'm his little girl and I get to sit on his lap and he loves me and I love him. 
the other day in the middle of the night as I was turning over in my bed in my sleep I said to the Heavenly Father I love you Father and I said I love you Jesus and I said I love you Holy Spirit and I heard them say back to me we know and I was like yeah at first I was upset actually I was really upset and when I woke up in the morning I'm like why was I upset about that I shouldn't be upset about it you know, God knows I love him. What a miracle that God knows. I have convinced God that I love him. And I love the fact that he knows that I love him. And the signs, wonders, and miracles come from our intimacy, knowing that we're children of God. I am a daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I'm the daughter of the creator of the heavens and the earth. I'm made in his image. And he has empowered me with his signs, wonders, and miracles. And four, that's not just for me. That's for you too. God did it for all of his creation, not just for me, but those who are willing to answer the call. See, the word of God says many are call few are chosen that means that many everybody's been called but but only a handful of people choose god only a hand people of uh, full of people respond to the call and when we respond to the call god equips us with his signs wonders and miracles with his power his ability and so all of this is god and just standing in alignment with god you will see the impossible so these miracles are from that and so i'm just so grateful and i the the fifth thing is in order for people to do signs wonders and miracles they need to see great faith faith is contagious faith is contagious and i have had great faith because my faith has come come to me from my mother who had great faith and the other believers that i've been around who've operated in signs wonders and miracles and raised the dead and so that gives me faith to believe for more and as i share this miracle with you it'll give you faith to believe for more and so these this faith-filled prayers and these faithful prophecies are not just from me they're from the god's throne room hearing and and honoring my prayers and I want you to know that's not just for me it's for every single believer so here goes I want to share with you this miracle it is amazing and I'm so blessed that God honors and hears our prayers okay so here we go okay so last year in September of 2017 um, there was a fire. It's why I live in California. I live in Southern California and it's wildfire season in September. Okay. We have, that's when a lot of things catch on fire. Part of the reason is because we have very little rainfall, almost no rainfall in September. And the other reason is because our vegetation and our land is so dry and there's like just leaves and pine and all of that stuff on the ground and it just can easily catch on fire and the fire can easily spread because of the dryness in California. And so that was September of 2017, as usual, is our, one of our wildfire seasons. And so, and very uh, little rain. In fact, I was looking at an article today, chances of rain in September is like, increasing and it's now increased to 1, 1 to uh, 3%. It's very, very low. So these wildfires just go crazy. This little fire can spread, you know, like a hot cake. And last September of 2017, there was a, such a fire it's called it was called the Las Tunas blaze and it burned 7,000 acres in Southern California it covered Sunland Tahunga and the Burbank area of Los Angeles California okay that's where this fire was and there were 7,000 acres that was burned and I had been contacted on September 3rd by some people some friends of mine who lived in the area and they said you know we need to pray for the Sunland Tahunga fires it's in my, in my neck of the woods and we needed to pray and they lived in Los Angeles and they said we need to pray for God to send uh, rain to put out the fire or to put out these fires so there'd be more no more destruction I'm like okay let's pray pray for rain and we prayed for rain and and I was all good and I was okay at that point didn't really feel like it was affecting me until uh, that night That was a Saturday, and on Saturday night, I got a phone call from my sister who lives in Burbank. And her name happens to be Mercy, and I love my sister Mercy. And, and uh, it's funny because Mercy was the line for me to cry out in prayer. And because I love my sister so much. And Mercy called me and said, Jane, the fire is a few miles away from my house. It was like two or three 
two miles or five miles from her house. It was pretty close. She called me and told me that. And at that part, it, it was like an error to my heart. And it motivated me to cry out to God. So I was praying about it. I was in the car and I was praying about it and God spoke to me about it. And, and around 1230 at night, I went on Facebook and I prayed out um, with the community of believers on Facebook and I prophesied and commanded rain uh, and I prayed for rain. I declared and decreed rain and we'll talk about declaring and decreeing another day and, and I prophesied rain and so I'm going to show you that video that I posted. Many of you may be uh, resting right now. It is, oh boy, it's uh, 12:30 at night, and I just got just got uh, some um, messages and phone calls from family members and friends. We're in Burbank, and the fire is very close to their home. So I just run a prophesy, declare and decree, and pray over them right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I just prophesy and declare and decree that the fire is over tonight. In Jesus' name, Father, I ask you to forgive us of our sins and cleanse our land. In Jesus' name, I declare and decree. Father, I pray for divine intervention. I pray for rain. I pray for rain, God. Let it rain. Let it rain. Let your mercy rain over Burbank. In Jesus' name, let your mercy rain over Burbank, Father. We declare and decree your rain, Father God, over Burbank right now. In Jesus' Jesus name over those fires God that there is divine intervention father I thank you for the hard labor of the firefighters God but father we pray right now for divine intervention not because we deserve it but because you are a merciful God and father in Jesus name I uh, declare and decree your mercy God that you are a God of mercy and that you draw a line father and say this far and no further father I thank you father for hearing my prayer I thank you for divine intervention I just feel your Holy Spirit right now in Jesus name father I declare your divine intervention God I thank you for your signs wonders and miracles and we stand on your promise that if we ask you will answer. And God, I ask you, Daddy, in Jesus' name, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you for supernatural divine rain in Burbank tonight, God, and that the fires would stop in the name of Jesus. Put out the fires, Father God, with supernatural rain, that there is no other explanation but you, Daddy. No other explanation but you. I plead the blood of Jesus over the sins of our nation and over the sins of Burbank. And in Jesus' name, God, I declare that you alone are God. In Jesus' name, you alone are God of Burbank. And Father, I declare in Jesus' name that your healing rain pour out right now in Jesus' name in Burbank and put out those fires, God. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you all. Thanks for joining me. And I'll uh, see you tomorrow. And believe in God's going to send rain. Love you, Daddy. God bless you all. Bye-bye. You know, I just wanted to add one more thing about praying for the rain. When I pulled into the... When I pulled into the driveway on the way here, the Lord had been saying, He had been saying that, um, he said, Jaira, that the Lord provides. And then he said, Jeremiah chapter 5, verse 5 through 8. And Jeremiah chapter 7, verse 8 and 9. And it's, hung up. As I was turning off the video the last time, the Holy Spirit kept saying, Remind them the scripture I gave them. Remind them of the scripture I gave them. Of the idolatry and the harlotry that's taking place. How shall I pardon you for this? Your children have forsaken me and sworn by those that are not gods. When I had fed them to the full, then they committed adultery and assembled themselves by troops in the harlots' houses. Shall I not punish them for these things, says the Lord? And shall I not avenge myself on such a nation as this? It's about idolatry and how people operate in idolatry. And God says, you, what do you want me to do with them? You're, they're operating in idolatry. What do you want me to do with them? And the Lord is saying, what do you want me to do with them? Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. What do you want me to do with idolatry? And you know, I tell you, sometimes judgment comes and 
um, or God removes his hand of protection because we're operating in our sin. And then, Father, I ask you again, Father, as I prayed all over this nation, forgive um, the idolatry of Burbank, God, and the materialism of our nation and how we've turned away from you and worshipped idols and demons, Father. Forgive us, Father God. Forgive us. I cover that territory in the blood of Jesus. Father, you alone are Lord. So, Lord, I pray for divine rain, God, your intervention. Let people see that you are merciful, that you are the Hosea to us as a Gomer, God. That even when we turn away from you, you are the faithful God. You are the faithful husband who is faithful to his Gomer wife, God. Who is, is um, in those scriptures, it talks about harlotry and how we give ourselves over in prostitution to idols. Forgive, forgive our sin, Father. Forgive our sin of pursuing materialism and things of the world, God. Forgive our sin. Forgive our sin and have mercy on us, God, and send rain in Jesus' name. Thank you, God, for the sake of your remnant. In Jesus' name, God, your word says in Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14, If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways um, and seek my face, I will hear from heaven, forgive their sin, and heal their land. We are your people, God. And I ask you to heal our land, God. Heal our land. Forgive us of our sin. And heal our land, God. Turn us away from our wicked ways, God. And Lord, don't let the people, God, think that it's happening because of firefighters. It's happening because of you, Lord. It's happening because of you. You will heal our land and protect us. Thank you, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray for your miracle tonight. Amen. And um, the, the Holy Spirit was saying, you know, tell them about that scripture I gave you. And so, and he said he was the provider, but he also wants us to understand that we are sinners and we're falling short of his glory and that we're pursuing idolatry. And God is saying that he'll provide anyways because he's merciful. When we repent, he forgives us. When we turn from our wicked ways, he turns us around. And although his back was to us because we turned away from him, he's turning back around. So, Father, I just thank you for your mercy and your grace, Lord. We don't deserve your mercy and grace, but you're so grateful because you look at us through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ, when we cry out for mercy. And, Father, as your daughter, as your daughter through Jesus Christ, I cry out for mercy for our land. God, forgive us for turning away from you, Lord. You love us. You're the, you're the lover who pursues, Lord. You pursue us, Father God. You are our Hosea, and we are the Gomer, and we have cheated on you, and we walked away, and we've been the unfaithful bride. But, Father, I thank you that you are the faithful husband who does not, who does not hold our sin against us, but sells everything he has, gave his son to die for us on the cross, and to pursue us as the Holy Bridegroom who comes after us, God. I just feel your spirit, Lord, to purify us and make us holy. God, I thank you, God, for saying, saving Burbank tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Love you all. Love you, Daddy. You're great. Thank you, Jesus, for restoring our relationship with God. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for filling us and for the miracle you're going to do tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. And the next uh so that day september 3rd when i got up i was doing chores and i went to the supermarket and i was in the supermarket by my house and i said to the father i said father it's hot can you cool it down for me and i was in the supermarket and this is september this is not rainy season this is dry season that's why we have the fires there's no rain in september okay the percentage of rain so i'm in the supermarket and i am praying to god to cool down the my area i said god I, I remember talking to god i wasn't even praying i just you know i talked to god throughout the day i talked to god all day long and i was talking to god and i said father it's really hot right now daddy i can you cool it down so i went in the supermarket i said that in the parking lot went in the supermarket and i came out and i came outside and it was pouring rain in september this was afternoon of september 3rd afternoon of September 3rd it was pouring rain and then I put my stuff in my in my car my groceries in my car I drove home it's just a couple of blocks away and I drove home and I'm in my driveway and as I'm driving I'm like Lord I asked for rain in Burbank not here 
And I'm like, oh, the Holy Spirit wants me to command the rain to go to Burbank. So I come home, I park my car, I get out, and I film this video as I commanded the rain to go to Burbank and to supernaturally put out the fire. So here's the video that I filmed on Facebook live on September 3rd in the afternoon. Here it goes. You know, it's um, pouring rain right now and uh, I'm not surprised because as I was praying for rain last night and I was commanding rain, but I was commanding it over Burbank and Tahunga in Oregon. <laughs> I think in the name of Jesus, because we have authority over wind and rain, and I'm not letting you see me right now because I'm just like cleaning up right now. I'm in clean mode. And um, see, there's just rain everywhere. And I think, and the rain's moving in that direction because I'm praying for it to go to Burbank. And that's the direction of Burbank. See, clear skies here. Sky's getting clear here. And the rain is moving in that direction. And that's where Burbank and Tahunga are. And I'm praying for it to go in that direction. It's over Long Beach right now. And we're praying in the name of Jesus that the rain would go to Burbank, to Hunga area and put out the fires in the name of Jesus. The fires are near my friend's house. It's near my sister's house. And in Jesus' name, I declare and decree and I prophesy to this rain, you are going to Burbank and you're going to Tahunga and you're going to go put out that fire in Las Tunas. In Jesus' name, I command this storm to go in Jesus' name and to Burbank and Las Tunas and Tahunga and put out the fire in Jesus' name. Father, I thank you for the rain. Thank you, Daddy, for answering my prayers. And I know I called forth the rain here last night. And Father, I thank you that you answer our prayers in the name of Jesus and that this rain is going to go and put out the fire in Jesus' name. Thanks, Dad. I love you. So we declare and decree and prophesy and speak to the winds that the rain is going to to Burbank and Las Tunas and uh, Tahunga to put out the fire in Jesus' name. And we declare rain over or um, Oregon to put out the fires of the Lord. And I know I had to repent for the sins of our nation and our territories. Father God, in Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you, Lord. Please forgive the people of Burbank and those communities in Los Angeles for our sin, God. In Jesus' name, the sin that comes out of Burbank Studios, Lord. The sin that comes out of uh, Disney, Lord. In Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. We trust you, God, that you're going to come through in Jesus' name. And the rain is going over those fires now, God. Thank you, Lord. It started here. We claimed it last night. And thank you, Lord, for answering prayer in Jesus' name. God bless you all. And we're praying for the rain to go to those over those fires. Love you all. Talk to you soon. Take care. God bless. Bye-bye. So then what happened was really amazing. The next day I got up. And I looked at the articles and it said that overnight a rain mysteriously came overnight to Burbank and helped put out the fire and that the firemen could not have put out the fire without the rain. Isn't that amazing how God answers prayer? And uh, you know how when you walk in your prophetic anointing, when you walk in the power of God, when you walk in signs, wonders, and miracles, that God will use you to demonstrate his power. You know, like Peter went to the gate beautiful and here's this man and Peter heals him supernaturally. And that man had been ill for years and God used Peter to do it. But what happened? It gave the glory to God and it brought more people into the church. And that's the purpose of demonstrative miracles is for people to recognize and believe that God is because he will do the impossible through you and me and for so long the church has not been walking in her miracle power we've been pew sitting Christians and you know we compromise the word of God and we live in mediocrity and God does not want us to be lukewarm warm believers he wants us to be on fire believers filled with the Holy Spirit and having the faith to move mountains because it brings glory to God
God. And the last day's church is going to manifest the glory of God in signs, wonders, and miracles so others can know that Jesus is real. They can know that you could be filled with the Holy Spirit. They can know that you can walk on water and move, uh, move the mountains and raise the dead and heal the sick and cast out demons. This is what God wants for his bride to be on hot white fire for him and to um, operate in signs, wonders, and miracles so that all may see and glorify our Father in heaven. And so that's what this miracle was. So you'll see in this article that the police chief of Burbank said that overnight uh, a rain came help put the fire out and they couldn't have done it without the rain. That's God. That's God. That's a modern day miracle. And not everybody knew that that's how it happened, but that's how it happened. And many people were uh, praying. Many people were praying. And I believe that. Many people were praying and God was hearing. But you know what? God wants us to step out and command the wind and the rain. He wants us to step out and believe and speak to the wind and the rain. He wants us to speak to the weather. He wants us to speak to the sickness. You know, um, many times when I pray for people with cancer, you know, um, the time that I prayed for the lady with cancer and she was healed, curse the cancer. I curse the cancer and I bless her healthy cells. You know, God wants me to speak to the cancer. He wants us to speak to death. He wants to speak to disease. He wants to speak to poverty. He wants to speak to the wealth. He wants to speak to our bodies. He wants to speak to demons and tell them to leave. And he wants us to speak to the angels. The word of God says he has put his angels in charge over us. And so we're to give the angels instructions. They're waiting for instructions to do miracles, waiting for us to tell them what to do to manifest miracles. You know, so this is the anointing in these last days and God wants us to operate in his power. When we put the mantle of Jesus Christ on from Ephesians chapter 6, we're putting on the full armor of God. We're robing ourselves in Christ Jesus and we're manifesting the Son of God here on earth. And it's not because we are God, it's because we are vessels. We're the temples of the Holy Spirit and we house God and that we allow God to operate in and through us. This is where the miracles come from. This is where the miracles come from. I I just want you to know every time I God has used me to do a miracle it's because I've made myself available to him and he comes into me and operates in and through me and when I lay hands on somebody these are Christ's hands and not my hands God uses my hands to touch them. God uses my heart to love them. God uses my word to speak for them. God uses my eyes to see them. His eyes are always on them. And he wants us to touch and heal and love a generation back to wholeness and into the arms of the Father, into salvation and deliverance. He doesn't want us to just preach, you know, you're, you know when you die, you're going to go to heaven because you believe in Jesus. That's just half the story. God wants them to have abundant love life starting the minute that they give their lives to the Lord. He wants them to fill, be filled with the Holy Holy Spirit. He wants us to experience redemption and knowledge and revelation. And he wants the fullness of God. It's called the Zoe life. It's John, John 10, 10. Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and I have come to give you life, life more abundant. And he wasn't talking about when we go to heaven. He was talking about starting today, right now. This is the purpose of signs, wonders, and miracles. And so many pastors will tell you, well, God isn't going to heal everybody. You know what? God didn't say that, pastor. There are times where God would tell me, well, I have a purpose in this and I don't want you to pray for it right now. There are times where God's told me that. And I do agree with that. But I want you to know, that most of the time, God says, okay, pray for their healing. And he is ready to do signs, wonders, and miracles. So God bless you all. I pray this blesses you. Put your hands out. I'm going to anoint you with oil right now. I'm going to anoint your hands with oil. In the name of Jesus, I'm anointing you with oil. I'm going to pour some oil in my hand. And I'm going to anoint you with oil right now for you to have miracle power. And I want your hands to get anointed. And then I want you to take your hands and I want you to lay it on your head. Okay, and I want you to pray 
for anointing. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray that these hands, these hearts, these minds, these, the, the soul and the spirit would be filled with the spirit of God. And I ask you to forgive the sin, Lord, any sin in them that would hinder that, any doubt, any unbelief, any departure from you, God, would be forgiven and removed. And they would be one-on-one -on -one with you and in deep, intimate relationship with you. And that they would feel the power of the Holy Spirit right now in Jesus' name. Signs, wonders, and miracles entering them right now in Jesus' name. So, Lord, I pray in Jesus' name, you know, that we don't give in to that spirit of witchcraft and self-glorification, self Lord, or gaining great wealth. No, Lord, this is about preaching the gospel to the ends of the earth that people will know and receive you as Savior and Lord Jesus and be filled with the Holy Spirit and have a deep, intimate relationship with the Father. So if your heart is in that place and you're willing to surrender, get ready for God to use you to do signs, wonders, and miracles. God bless you all. This is Jane Eddie Wessel, Lady Jesus, signing out. Bye.